I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order, please. Agenda item 2.1, adoption of the agenda. Recommendation that the agenda for the August 28, 2018 regular meeting of council be adopted as presented. Councillors Torgerson and Blanchett. Are there any amendments? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 3.1, adoption of the minutes of the August 14, 2018 regular meeting of council be adopted as presented. And it's uh, Salt and Torgerson. Are there any errors or omissions? Yes? One slight grammatical error on resolution number 241.18. Okay. And that's corrected. Anything further? All in favor? Carried. 4.1, we have a delegation, Radloff and Associates, a presentation of um, our governance study. And uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Adamson to take the floor, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Can you hear me okay through this? Does that sound good? I can hear you. I don't know about anybody else. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess uh, we've got a similar presentation that was uh, presented at the open house, but we've reduced it, um, got rid of a number of the slides that were made for the public uh, to do with uh, the, how tax systems work and things like that. So we'll cut right to kind of the, the main business parts of the presentation. You'll see that, um, in, a, in a sense, you already know the punchline. Uh, you saw the ending where we've assessed that uh, in the short term, costs will go up, but then you'll see assessed values grow substantially um, that would provide uh, enough uh, assessed values and tax revenues to cover those added costs. But we'll go through that and, and just make sure that you're comfortable with what we did and the assumptions we made. So when we looked at um, all the potential added costs and the services, we looked at uh, road maintenance, solid waste collection, the utilities, both water and sewer, the building inspection, bylaw enforcement, planning and development, and the general administration costs and council costs. And then we wanted to look at the impacts on VGDR and how to influence, how can the village of Vailmont influence VGDR? What's, what's the best process for that or the best option? So we started out by looking at the comparison of tax rates. We knew that if we're considering an annexation of uh, the contiguous area, which is within the, the regional district, that has a rural tax and uh, we wanted to use that as a starting point um, to show the difference between uh, the municipal tax level. This is from 2017, uh, but you can see a, a fairly substantial difference between the rural tax and what the municipality pays for. Now, I also indicated last night that there was a substantial change uh, from the 2017 assessed values, you saw a huge growth, 25% growth in property values. Um, your municipal costs increased by 8%, but you were able to reduce residential tax rates by 16% and business tax rates by 4%. So it's a really good illustration you had last year of rising asset values and how that generates more revenue and then you can, you can subsequently adjust your tax rates or spend it if you wanted to, <laughs> your choice. So in terms of the tax revenue from the contiguous area, what we did is we used a GIS exercise where we overlaid the boundary over the properties, got all the assessed values from the properties, and were able to determine what the equivalent tax rate would be from that contiguous area. So we had 76 properties in total, and you can see the various property classes that were, that were provided in that contiguous area. Based on the rural tax rate, um, that, those properties would have generated in 2017 128,000 uh, in property taxes. 
uh, 63 of that would have been directly for the regional district servicing. The rest would have gone to the province and to the regional hospital. So then we looked at what would, if the contiguous area was part of Vailmont, what would be the tax um, uh, revenues applicable to the area if we were to apply the 2017 rates and more subsequently we, we changed that to see what the rates would be if you apply the 2018 Vailmont. And you can see it's increased by about $20,000. So it's 148,000. So now we know based on 2018, what your added service costs would be for that area and then what the tax revenues would be to, and if you could cover those costs. Uh, you can see that in 2018, the divide between the rural tax rate and the municipal tax rate has, has come closer together. It's shrunk. So if the contiguous areas uh, was to be brought in to the municipal government, into the municipal boundaries, um, we could see that the current area H services would, would be continued. Uh, they'd be funded uh, under in different ways, but all of those services that they get today would be continued. Uh, the planning and development would be transferred to the village, so that would be an added cost. Water and sewer, likely not an added cost at this time because there's no water and sewer in that area. Solid waste, you may elect to add that uh, solid waste collection into that area. So we actually um, looked at the number of properties, the distance, and we used your rates from the village to apply to that so we could see what those added costs would be. Bylaw enforcement added, we adjusted uh, the staffing for bylaw enforcement. And then the roads, there would be added road maintenance for those air, those roads within the area and snow removal. So we know what that is per kilometer and we adjusted, we applied those rates. And then electoral representation, we added um, additional time for administration and for council for adding uh, more issues to deal with, more you know things you had to address. So how do the options, the each, each of these options then, we wanted to find out how this affects the village of Vailmont. And so what would be potential changes to Vailmont service delivery? I hope you can all see this. At least it's not cut off tonight. Um, but what we did is we went through, um, we worked uh, with your staff to look at current staffing levels and made assumptions in terms of if there is no annexation, if it's just the resort that is annexed, and the third option, if the resort and the contiguous area uh, are annexed. And then we looked at what the changes you would expect as a municipality for those services. So for example, building inspection, we would expect, as you're already seeing today, if there's no annexation, we would suspect that your building inspection would actually continue to go up because of the spin-off development. Level three building inspector is, is becoming required. So you municipalities, even like Prince George, would not be able to hire a level three. Uh, in most cases, municipalities would likely contract those out and so we put in 80 hours for that in case you had some large, more complex buildings. Um, solid waste collection, no change under option one and option two. Uh, water and sewer services, again, in option one and two, we didn't add added costs to those. You know, there might be some spin-off uh, costs, but some of those things can be, um, are cost neutral because of your, your rates and DCCs and so forth. Um, road maintenance, we added a kilometer uh, just because of new subdivision. Uh, by law enforcement, we increased that. Uh, planning and development, we added an FTE and 100 hours. This is, we're sort of thinking out about 2023 for these staffing things. So we know that from the time we started the report um, to when we sort of had that first draft, <laughs> We know that even in that period of time, you've in seen increased costs, increased staffing levels, and you've been able to cover those costs. So we took that into account. General administration, we added costs for that, another half-time position for the 
the additional busyness that's going to happen with this. And then we also looked at the fee structures for development permits, building permits, subdivision fees, and, um, and added a, a sort of a, an in incremental amount to those. And then again, general, um, general administration costs. So we did this for each of those. You can see that when you get to option two, where the resort comes in, you, you get substantially more added costs, which is to be expected, right? You've got a lot more, you're gonna be dealing directly with that resort. So in option one, no annexation, we were around 300,000. In option two, we're upwards around um, 600,000 for the added work with the resort. And for option three, it's a slight increase because you're adding area H in, but it's not gonna require a lot of extra work for that area. So there's a slight bump up with option three. So we wanted to look at the hypothetical effect of these different options on Vailmont, the property tax rate. So we took those added costs and we looked at the tax rates. So for example, 2018, we said, well, what tax rate would need to be set to cover those costs for option one? And so it's about 3.483, which is pretty much what you have now today in your 2018 tax rates. Um, that would go up a little bit in option, um, well, like, that's what I'm showing, sorry, in option one down below in 2023. So the first row is today, second row is 2023 with option one, so no annexation. You can see that bump up in the tax rate to cover those additional costs. Now in option two, so that's the resort at phase one, um, where there's going to be expected a substantial investment and uh, assessed values, you can see a, a quite a drop in the tax rate due to the assessed increased assessed values. So again, this is hypothetical. This is based on Performa data that the resort has provided to us in terms of their assets. So. We've got, um, we've got four things we looked at here then as a summary way. We thought it was important to really summarize this. Uh, there's a lot of detail in the report, um, goes into um, a lot of detail in terms of the assumptions and how we calculated things. And so we're providing this, these sorts of tables as the summary. So you can, you can kind of see where things ended up. So again, on... This first one, this is option one, uh, no annexation. There's the, uh, there's the uh, assessed property value in 2018. There's your costs, your revenue from the tax. And so we don't see any change for area H because they're not part of the annexation. And we think a slight increase in, um, in taxes might be warranted in, in around 2023. If we look at option two, where the resort is part of Vailmont uh, and phase one is completed, you can see, again, a jump in the asset values. There's the estimated additional costs. The next column is the revenue expected from the 2008, it should say 2018 rates, because I changed those. Um, so you can see, with applying 2018 rates, you're collecting more money than your added costs. So this is where you would work in terms of deciding what you would do if you lower the tax rates or so forth. Again, no change in area H because they're not part of the annexation. And you can see a, a, here we're talking about a potential decrease in taxes. So again, the picture is slight increase and then we start seeing the ability to decrease taxes. Little bit of pain, short-term pain, long-term gain, as they say. The hypothetical changes to property tax for uh, option two, um, this is with the resort in phase three. This is where it gets really crazy or exciting, depending on how you look at it. But the assessed values based on the performa data, uh, we're talking a very high-end 
properties, uh, very high-end development. So, you know, close to $750 million in asset values would be part of Valmont. You can see the added costs, the huge amount of revenues that would be generated based on your 2018 tax revenues or rates. And again, no change in age, but this is where we start seeing a potential significant decrease in the tax rates or, you know, spending some of it and, and uh, lowering it. So again, those choices here, but wouldn't it be wonderful to have those choices to make? <laughs> Option three, the this is the final one. So this is where um, VGDR is, uh, phase three is completed and area H is in this as well. So this, you know, changes slightly. It's the same picture as the last one. The only difference is now we actually can see that here's where um, there could be a hypothetical lowering of the tax rates for even the rural people that have come into the community because there's so much asset value now. These um, next charts are what really, everything in the report kind of spills into these charts and, and this really starts telling the story. Um, the red lines are the costs for Valmont. The blue lines or the purple lines are the revenues from taxes from Valmont and the green line is uh, in the chart is the tax revenues from the resort. You can see that by sort of 2021, it's hard to read the years there, but by 2021, you know, they're starting their gondolas, they're starting their investment. You can see the property values increase. And again, we followed the pro forma uh, phasing of development of their core development and their subdivisions to come up with these figures. So again, in the early years, um, we're seeing added costs um, and uh, there might need to be some adjustments on the tax rates or other grant funding or other strategies, budgetary strategies to deal with those added costs in the early phase of, of the VGDR development. But around 2023 is the time, again, based on all the assumptions we have in the report, um, and we've laid out the assumptions very clearly in our worksheets so that administration can adjust those as they get new information. But basically, you know, according to this, this uh, data, by 2023, this is when we really see the development in the VGDR really taking off a lot of asset value. This is where um, this could be a really good time for the uh, annexation to, to occur. And beyond 2023 is where, um, according to current tax rates, the asset value generating the tax revenues far outstrip uh, all your costs, your added costs. So where did that leave us? Well, one of the things that I wanted to really highlight was a key comment that, that we heard from our team members who have been involved in other communities um, that you're in the same similar situation that you're in. Um, and also from uh, other workshops that you've held with other communities and Silvio has talked to me about those. And this is a key statement that we keep hearing. You're beside this resort and you will have the impacts and cost to your community, whether the resort is part of your community or not. So is it better to be including them and then you receive the benefits and have more influence? So that really becomes down the, the crux of. So our recommendations is to further explore the option of a satellite annexation to VGDR base area. Now I should mention when, when we met with the province, the provincial agency folks, there was, um, originally they had no objection to a satellite and then when they saw the draft report, it, they must have got cold feet because they suddenly started saying, well, we're not sure, you know, you should expand the boundary to include the road that goes to the resort. And we were, 
emailing them back and discussing back and saying, well, it doesn't really make sense and why is this? So there's some back and forth and finally, and I do have the email, I will save it, I think Silvio has it, where they, they did meet as a provincial committee and agreed um, that under this scenario, this makes sense to have this satellite addition. So it sounds like you would have uh, the okay and support from the province if you wanted to go that route. So that was good news. So in terms of moving forward, there, there are a number of things you could do. I'm sure you've thought about how you would sort of further that relationship with the resort, that great relationship you already have. Um, you could develop a protocol with the resort uh, developers in terms of outlining the interests of cooperation and pursuing the annexation, the timing, how that would look, what would be involved, what would be included. Um, you could do further assessment on the resort uh, and with the regional district in terms of fire services and related building inspection. As a municipality, you're not required to have um, fire services, but you are required to provide building inspection for fire safety and so forth. So they intend on having a, their own volunteer fire department. You have a fire services here. Um, you know, there may be other equipment that's needed there, the, if they've got more complex buildings or higher buildings. I think um, it would be prudent to have more detailed discussion with experts and, and with these folks in terms of really laying that out and what that would look like. Another part of this recommendation would be, um, you know, Continuing to work with the resort, they do have planned self-sufficiency for service delivery, so water, sewer, power, but um, you know those can change. Um, I wouldn't say those would be enormous problems if they change because again, a lot of the utilities can be set up to um, be cost neutral and ensure that they have enough money put away uh, for life cycle costing and replacement and things like that. So if things change with the resort, I wouldn't see that as, as um, a major problem but it's probably good to touch bases with them. And I know that there may be some discussions needed in terms of solid waste collection. You know, their intent now is to actually have it truck themselves to the Prince George landfill, but who knows, maybe there's some interest or some cooperation with uh, using a transfer station here. Uh, also believe there's more detailed discussions on the service agreement. They do have an interest of having the municipality uh, maintain the roads, the public roads. So what does that look like? Who owns the infrastructure on the resort? There's some discussions around that. So, um, you know, I've, I've worked a lot with um, communities and service agreements that can be very complicated and it, they can open up a lot of different questions and, um, and it may take some time, so early discussion on those sorts of things and, and getting that clear on both party sides would, would be a good idea. And then uh, reviewing, I guess, the resort and local businesses, this option of establishing a resort association um, where you can raise and earmark uh, levy funding for promotion development. Now I understand from Silvio that the existing funding you get can be used for marketing but not for capital, whereas I think this program can be used for capital. So it might be something to, to start working with the resort on and business owners. Recommendation number two is um, uh, to consider annexation of the resort when phase one has progressed substantially. And we think that's important not to do it too early um, until there's substantial investment um, on the ground um, but not too late because if you start getting a lot of residences um, uh, living up there and they may be out of province, out of country, um, the province is looking for their nod. So it just complicates things if, if, it's, way, if it's left too long. So it does reduce the risk if, if you plan this well. Uh, the timing allows for enough assessed value of the resort to offset uh, your added costs. It's early enough to support and influence the resort. And that's a key thing. I know that I hear that a lot. 
um, about wanting to, to work cooperatively with the resort, but for them to understand your issues that you may be having and the interests that you have and, and really influencing that in a formal way. And the timing occurs before significant residential development occurs. I, I mentioned that already. We don't see any appreciable benefits for the village or the residents for annexation of the contiguous area in the near future. Um, there's potential, we think there's a potential for smaller annexations ne near the boundary in areas where they may want water and, and sanitary sewers. And I, if I was a, a, a person of, of prediction, I would say you probably see some of that interest in the future. Um, where people will want to develop more subdivisions. So you could see some interest from developers or from that, that side coming forward for that. Um, and it's something that uh, you, know, you can always look at to the future with. And uh, the final thing, I, I really, um, I've written a lot of reports in my career that end up sitting on a shelf and I really uh, wanted to make a report that can be used um, on an ongoing basis. So I've developed um, very comprehensive worksheets in Excel, um, kind of with lots of notes in terms of assumptions. So next year, administration can add the new tax rates in, the new assessed values, and do another assessment and see where things are. They can go forward and say, well, man, that Adamson guy was crazy. He's, he went, you know, too much on staff. We don't think we need that much, so put that new figure in and see where the costs add up. So it's completely manipulable, um, if that's a word. Um, but anyway, I wanted to keep it as a, as a living part of the document. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Adamson. Does the council have any comments or questions of Mr. Adamson while he's at the podium? No? I think they want to hang around for another 30 years to see what's going to happen. Councillor <laughs> 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 I just wanted to say thank you. <clears throat> yeah. I wanted to say thank you, too, and uh, also uh, the fact that you recommend option two, and I think that's uh, the, the safest way for us to go. Um, not immediately, but uh, as you say, once um, significant uh, construction has commenced, and that's uh, the time to do it, that we know that there won't be any risk involved to the village. Right. Yes. So thank you very much, and uh, um, you'll probably be hearing from us in the future. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure working with everybody, the administration and yourselves and the committees and everything has been just a wonderful experience. Good. Thank you. And we want to thank you very much too for your uh, diligence and your professionalism. So thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Council, we'll take a motion please to um, receive the delegation. Okay, Blanchett and Reimer. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. <coughs> Agenda item 5.1, review of a development cost charges. And um, before there is direction from council to staff, okay. I should like to uh, ask for a um, motion, please, to receive for discussion. Blanchette and Salt, okay? And uh, does council have any questions of administration about any one of these three alternates? Any questions or comments, Councillor Salt? Uh, yeah, so I guess one um, question, comment that I came across upon reviewing our project file tracker is we had this kind of logged in there as, as something to review. Uh, we had a DCC bylaw rewrite. And however, we, we said that um, it will be part of the process and the asset management plan that's being currently worked on, mm -hmm. so that some of these concerns will be covered in that, and that that might be the time to look at adjusting anything. Yes, Councillor Torrison. Uh, Your Worship, I, I concur with Councillor Salt. I also want to add um, that the, the the time could be 
in conjunction with an OCP review. Mm -hmm. And that comprehensive OCP review uh, would be best suited in around the phase one development of a, a VGDR. So doing a comprehensive review of our DCCs would also be a good timing in, in that respect. And uh, my only caution would be is that uh, we don't want the DCCs to be raised, um, to be increased so much that it would... Um, deter. Deter. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say to uh, lose the interest of any development at all, okay? Because that can happen. So I would take number two. Yes. And I'd just comment that since 2002, just basic indexes and inflation, it would be 80% minimum okay. that, that this community would be asking developers to cough up. Okay, uh, and I guess I should like to uh, have a comparison to municipalities the same size as Vale Mount and not uh, large, larger centres or cities. As uh, Mr. Fleming said, Chetwind removed their DCCs altogether. Yeah, so there are some municipalities that have done that. So, uh, number two then. First of all, all in favour of receipt? Carried. Do we have a mover and a shaker for that? Yes, we did. Yes. Okay, so that would be number two, that staff be directed to defer the process of reviewing the development cost charge bylaw number 516-2002. Okay, number two? Okay, Torgerson and Salt. All in favour? Carried. Agenda item 5.2, engineering fees for phase two of Canoe Mountain Development Subdivision. Yes. I'll just have to step up. Okay. Okay, that's right. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. All right, the recommendation is that staff be directed to charge engineering fees for the Canoe Mountain Developments Phase 2 subdivision at actual costs incurred prior to final subdivision approval. Salt and Reimer. I have one question. Was Canoe Mountain Developments advised during preliminary discussions of this fee? That's what I would like to know. I, I wasn't here at the time, so I'll defer. I don't know. If Ms. Shepherd, yes. Thank you, Worship. I wasn't uh, present for phase two discussions, but we did charge phase one at cost as well. Okay. All right, so that answers my question. Thank you very much. Does Council have any questions? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Okay. Councillor Torgerson invited back in. You heard the bang of the gavel. It's safe to come back. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Agenda item 6.1. And that is that uh, the Vailmont Community Forest Company Limited annual general meeting be held on Sept Thursday, September 20th, 2018. I should like to have that corrected, please. Uh, VCF and I discussed this today, and the date will be changed to Monday, September 17th. I'll move that. Okay, moved by Councillor Torgerson, seconded by Councillor Reimer, that the Vailmount uh, Community Forest Annual general meeting be held on Monday, September 17. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Carried. And two, that the Vailmount Community Forest extend the term for the existing VCF Board of Directors for up to one year. Reimer and Torgerson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 6.2. The Mount Chamber of Commerce All Candidates Forum. Recommendation that the rental fees be waived for the upcoming All Candidates Forum at the Vail Mount Secondary School. The event date and time is to be determined when school begins and bookings commence in September. Motion please, Salt and Reimer. All in favor? Carried. And with respect to that uh, agenda item, I just wanted to uh, assure Councillor Blanchett that just because she's the chair of the chamber, she's not in any kind of a conflict because she's not benefiting. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. 
and Agenda 7, is there anything in the reading file that Council wishes to bring forward for discussion? Councillor Torgerson. I would like to pull out the various communications in regard to the uh, Caribou Recovery mm -hmm. uh, Initiative by the Feds. Um, sorry, federal government. The, <laughs> the, um, I'd like to uh, just add that both VARDA, the BC Snowmobiling Federation, uh, and the uh, Belmont Community Forest is also preparing their responses to Minister McKenna. Okay. And is there anything that you wish to take forward from the village of Belmont, or uh, not at this time? Until this? until until the science is is and facts are, are brought to the table okay. uh, for this area, then we can uh, make a calculated response. Okay. Administrative reports, 8.1, proposed development permit with uh, variance on Cranberry Lake Road, recommendation one. That, you are sure yes. going to have to step up for this one. Oh, you're well. going to have to step up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Busy boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, recommendation one, that development permit 01-18 with a variance at 885 Cranberry Lake Road, legally described as lot B, district lot 7354, Caribou District Plan 18868, be approved to vary zoning bylaw number 610-2007 as follows. Section 15, 2.6, to increase the permitted maximum floor area of a retail store from 200 square meters to approximately 203 square meters. Section 15, 3.3, .3, to increase Increase the permitted maximum height of a principal building from 12 meters to 13.6 meters, and that the corporate officer be authorized to sign and issue development permit 01 18. Could I have a motion, please? Romer and Blanchett. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. That should bring in Councillor Torgerson. <laughs> he doesn't want us to think he's right at the door. Yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Worship. You're very welcome. And you know, I didn't realize that the uh, UBCM Green Communities Committee was in the reading file. And I just want to uh, point out the uh, significance of the fact that uh, the Village of Vailmount has received this uh, honorary. Um, letter from the Assistant Deputy Minister of uh, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing and Executive Director of UBCM. And uh, with the congratulations again on your community continually improving achievement. We applaud your leadership and wish you continued success in your ongoing commitment to the goal of corporate carbon neutrality and your efforts to reduce emissions in the broader community. So we have all these um, little what are they? We can, um, we've achieved level one, level two recognition, and uh, we have all of these little uh, things for our doors, stickers and uh, whatever else. <laughs> so um, we signed October 17th, 2007, the uh, BC Climate Action um, Group. And uh, it was subsequent to that that the Premier of British Columbia appointed me to uh, a Provincial um, Advisory Council on Climate Action, which I served on for several years. So I think this is a real achievement for mm -hmm. us and um, something to be very proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your Worship, yes, I'd just like to um, comment and further that. Uh, we've been awarded the level three recognition for yes. accelerating progress. Yes. Yeah. So yes. that's uh, excellent. Yes. Yeah, and um, I think we should all be very proud of that. So we should uh, receive all of these little climate leader logos for use on websites and letterheads, etc., and uh, show off. <laughs> I'll move that. Okay. <laughs> we show off? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Why not? Why not? Okay. So, agenda item 8.2, proposed development permit 1160 Fifth Avenue, recommendations that this report be received. Motion, please. Salt and Blanchette. 
And all in favor of receipt? Carried. Two, that staff be authorized to prepare development permit 0718 for the continued use of a second accessory building varying the number of permitted accessory buildings on the property legally described as parcel A, being a consolidation of lots three and four, district lot 9778, Caribou District Plan PGP 35390, PID 029-602-602. What's council's wish? Blanchett and Salt. That staff be authorized, parent, uh, et cetera. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. And proposed development variance permit, DVP 02 18, 1289th Avenue. Recommendation that this report be received. Blanchett and Torgerson. Any discussion under receipt? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Recommendation that staff be directed to issue development variance period permit 02-18 as lot two, district lot 7355, Caribou District Plan 26557 to vary Village of Vailmount Zoning Bylaw number 610, 2007, section 6.3.8, maximum height of accessory building to permit an accessory building height of 4.1 meters from 3.5 meters. Motion, please. Torgerson and Reimer. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. 8.4, permissive tax exemption. Recommendation that the following exemptions be approved for 2019. Bailmount Senior Citizen Housing. That's uh, the old seniors housing. I guess that's the uh, complex. Golden Years Lodge. Yes, okay. <clears throat> 100% uh, Provincial Rental Housing Corporation, that's the new seniors housing, 100%. And when that property was given, Councillor Torgerson, to seniors, it was not worth any $200,000. It wasn't worth anywhere near that, okay? Provincial Renting, Renting Housing Corp, yeah, 100%. United Church of Canada, 100%. Roman Catholic Bishop, 100%. And Vail Mountain New Life Centre, 100%. What is Council's wish? Moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor Salt, that the uh, recommendation for these noted uh, five, yes, exactly five. The Vailmont Senior Housing, Provincial Rental Housing Corp, United Church of Canada, Roman Catholic Bishop, and Vailmont New Life Centre be approved for 2009 exemption at 100%. Okay. 2019. Oh, 2019, okay. So all in favor? Carried. Okay, recommendation that the following organizations be provided a tax exemption for 2019 with rates as determined by council. And number one is the Vailmount Curling Club. What is council's wish? I'll move a 50% exemption, please. Okay, second. Moved by Councillor Torgerson and seconded by Councillor Salt that the Vailmont Curling Club be given a 50% exemption. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Vailmont Lions Club, what is Council's wish? Councillor Torgerson? I'll move a 50% exemption. Okay. Second? Okay, second by uh, Councillor um, Reimer. Any discussion? Clarification. Yes. Uh, bracket 75 percent or is it 50 percent that's I'm it was moved at 50 percent okay. this is last okay. year's total yeah. that okay. was last year's okay. thank you okay if there is no discussion all in favor carried barda mm -hmm. oh sorry the amount legion yes i would like to move 100 percent for the legion is there a seconder Sorry, Councillor Blanchett, that dies on the floor. Could I have a, another um, motion, please, for the Legion? Yes. I'll move 75%. Moved by Councillor Torreson, 75% for the Legion. Seconder? Okay, and it's Reimer. All in favor? Carried. Varda, to, uh, what is Council's wish? Yes, Councillor? I'll move 50%, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Torreson that uh, Varda be given a 50% uh, exemption and seconded by Councillor Blanchett. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favour? 
All right. Yes. I'm going to recuse myself okay. for the next one. Okay. Due to perceived conflict. Yes. The amount affordable rental society. I do have um, one concern with respect to that because it says application submissions must include but are not limited to the following. So they must include copy of financial statements for the last three years, copy of registered charity or nonprofit information returned for the previous year. Um, Description of programs, services, benefits delivered from the subject land and improvement, including participant numbers, volunteer hours, fees charged for participation, benefits to the community. Description of any third party use of the subject land and improvements, including user group names, fees charged, and terms of use. And I'm sorry that uh, reading the application that um, these conditions which must be included are not met because they haven't uh, been incorporated for even one year yes worship just I, I agree with your with with the uh, policy of the application however just a point of order uh, perhaps a motion should have been brought to the floor prior to uh, the agenda being verbalized Mr. Administrator, what do you say about this? Um, Should it have been brought to the floor before? I mean, it was listed here by staff. Correct. Yes. So the fact that those items were not covered. Yeah. Um, I suspect, although I didn't write the report, um, I suspect that being a new organization, it was being brought forward to council as a new organization. Um, those items have, in fact, not been addressed as per the policy it's 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 how you wish to follow your policy yeah your worship a move that we follow the policy okay so moved by councillor Torgerson and seconded by councillors Blanchett and Reimer that uh, the policy be um, followed okay and we will leave that out at this time so um, we can just go on now. If there's um, anything that Council wishes to um, discuss at this time, Councillor Blanchett? Did we want to bring Councillor Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about her being out there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> And out and out. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, as the chair, I forgot that you were out there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Blanchett reminded me. <laughs> okay, agenda item 8.5. Recommendation that staff be directed to apply for the Government of Canada Celebrate Canada program for 2019. Okay, Blanchett and Reimer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. 8.6, Northern Development Initiatives Trust, Business Facade Improvement Funding, recommendation that staff be directed to apply for the NDIT Business Facade Improvement Program for 2019. Reimer and Blanchett. Is there any discussion under that? Yes, Councillor. I'm just curious, um, on the ones that didn't follow through this year, does that funding remain in the pool for next year? We're Council. asking that question as we speak. Okay, thank you. And uh, can you answer? Uh, uh, I can't speak to that. You can't speak to that? Okay. Your Mrs. McNee? It, does. it, it doesn't. Okay. 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 So it doesn't then. Okay. Yes, Councillor. I, I hope there's many applications. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. So if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 8.7. Veilmount Affordable Rentals Society request uh, that staff be directed to draft a bylaw to waive development cost charges for not-for-profit rental housing, including supportive living housing. What is Council's wish? Can 
Councillor Salt? Move for discussion. Okay, I will or do, we, do I make a move, move the motion so we can open it for discussion? Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, ask for a motion, please, uh, to receive this for discussion purposes. Okay, Blanchette and Torgerson. Open for discussion, Council. Yes? I would uh, seek uh, the recommendations from the province. Uh, we will be meeting with the Minister of uh, children and family. We can also uh, bend her ear on housing as it's under her purview as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think while we're while we're discussing the the idea of transition housing as mm -hmm. well, uh, I think we can take a few minutes to bring this up during that meeting. Mm -hmm. It was Council's wish. I like that idea. Okay, Councillor Blanchett approves. Councillor Rammer. Uh, <clears throat> Your Worship, I just want to point out that. The uh, Provincial Act does in fact uh, provide for um, municipalities to incorporate into their bylaws uh, a waiver of development cost charges for certain um, groups including um, not-for-profit rental or uh, social housing. And uh, <clears throat> if um, the delay of our reviewing the development cost charge bylaw in any way um, is not timely enough for particular groups that want to develop something like this. Perhaps uh, they can apply at the time of development for us to do that, if that's possible, or if that does change the development cost by law and that needs approval, um, and we have to wait one year before we can implement that, then we may need to review, have another look at that. Mm -hmm. Your Worship, perhaps I could respond to that. Um, under the legislation, if you want to um, increase your development cost charge fees, you have to put the science behind it. Um, uh, you, ha you have to look at uh, the cost for the new infrastructure. That's what we did in the beginning. You look at the cost for the infrastructure you're trying to finance, and then you develop your formulas for your development cost charges. You have to get the inspector's approval. When it comes to a statutory exemption, as Councillor Reimer mentions, uh, there are four statutory classes that you are allowed to uh, amend your bylaw to consider, social mm -hmm. housing and affordable housing, and you can do that without the inspector's approval. So we could consider that um, at any time, now or in the future when they are about to start to build, um, but we, you can do that without the inspector's approval. Okay. So, okay. okay. Okay, Councillor Saul. Yeah, it's, it's section 563 and it specifically states in the section eligible development means a development that is eligible in accordance with an applicable bylaw or regulation under this section as being for one or more of the following categories as our um, Chief Administrative Officer mentioned. And A, the very first one is not-for-profit rental housing including supportive living housing. B, for-profit affordable rental housing. C, a subdivision of small lots that is designed to result in low greenhouse gas emissions. Or D, a development that is designed to result in a low environmental impact. So it's quite clearly stated there. That's good. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Torgerson did suggest that we discuss this with the Minister when we uh, are at UBCM meetings, and we can do that. But uh, what we could do uh, is vote on receipt of this, and uh, I would entertain a motion to defer until we get further, um, until council gets further information. Yes, councilor. A question for the administrator, your worship. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's been asked and I'm just, mm -hmm. anywhere under the act, uh, local government act, uh, at the time of application, do we have the authority to exempt DCCs? I think you'd want to create that bylaw before yes. they actually made the formal application. Okay. They would approach you and say they're planning to do this, and you would decide to do the bylaw amendment. Okay. I mean, we meet with the administrator, or sorry, the, the minister on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it would require a bylaw amendment prior to council making a decision. Okay. Okay, so all in favor of receipt and a motion to defer this to the next council meeting? Um, no, I don't know whether 
it would, whether count, uh, staff would be ready for the next council meeting or just defer it for now? Um, what, what your you next suggest? council meeting, I believe, is September 25th. There's a, yes, quite a bit okay. of time, but uh, yes. um, you, you do have the ability to consider this. Uh, I, I think you could choose to see a little bit more flesh on the, mm -hmm. the skeleton of the proposal mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you actually write the bylaw. It wouldn't take us long to write the bylaw okay. and to get in front of council, and basically you, you could do it in two meetings. Okay, yeah. good. All right. So we will meet with the, with the minister. Um, that is what, September the 13th, that we meet with the, the minister, and uh, we could just defer this to the September 25th meeting. Mr. Fleming? Sure. That's what mm. you suggest? Okay. All right. So um, we don't need a motion for that, do we? Or just uh, to defer it? Maybe maybe you should. Okay. I'll take a motion just to defer this. Yes. To the September 25th meeting. We, um, and, that, um, and then it would take two meetings after that in order to amend the bylaws. So... I, I don't know if they actually have plans for the construction of the, the new housing. Okay. And that's where the DCCs apply to. Okay. Um, so there, there's, once you decide you want to move that direction, then that's really a matter of seeing the plans. Okay. Uh, and then you would actually start the bylaw process. Okay. And you will have until next uh, construction season. Construction season. Basically. Okay. So defer. I think we just def defer it for uh, staff recommendation. Sure. Okay. So I'll take a motion to defer this for staff recommendation. Salt and uh, Blanchett. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Okay. Agenda item 10.1, council reports. We'll start with uh, Councillor Blanchett because I'm sure she has some interesting reports to give. <laughs> um, had a great time in Vegas. I did watch you guys on my iPad uh, in 104 degree heat. I watched you guys. <laughs> previous kind of thing. Um, the 23rd, we had a housing meeting. Um, and on the 27th, we had the boundary expansion update uh, with uh, Dan Adamson, which was really great, as we all know. Uh, today, we had the NDIT presentation, which was wonderful. And I thank them for the facade program on the behalf of the chamber. And also today, we had a really great meeting, housing meeting again with Dan Adamson and David Fransman and it was really productive. So it was nice to see the, the Affordable Housing Committee moving forward so quickly, so that's it. Thank you. Councillor Reimer? I can't believe that Councillor Salt found nothing better in Vegas than to watch. Mm -hmm. Councillor Blanchett. I'm sorry, Councillor Blanchett found nothing better. I didn't tell you what I was doing while I watched you. Oh, I, <laughs> I, 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 I unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I, I mean, Playing the slots, Councilor mm. Winning? No. <laughs> However, uh, yeah, all the way to Vegas to do that. Uh, 23rd uh, of uh, yeah, last week, a uh, housing committee meeting. Last night, the open house with Dan Adamson. And uh, this afternoon, I was at the housing committee meeting again with a presentation by Dan Adamson. And getting all the ideas and yeah lots of lots of things that we need to think about for moving forward with different types of housing in the community that's my report thank you councillor salt i attended the boundary extent expansion public open house like everyone else last night and i'm here with you tonight thank you councillor torgerson on the 15th, I joined the board of Varda. Always a great meeting uh, with that organization. Uh, boundary expansion last night. Uh, the NDIT tour with uh, their various staff, and I'm pleased to hear that they're uh, they're getting out to see what uh, getting out and seeing and touching what their investments are actually going towards. And I'm here before you now. Good, thank you. And the week before last, I was at the, that would have been September the or sorry August 18, Regional District Fraser Fort George in uh, the city of Prince George. And the morning that I was coming home at nine o'clock, it was pitch black outside. It looked like evening or night, and it was uh, the longest trip that I've ever. Um, 
taken between Prince George and Vermont to get home. And I still don't know why. I haven't heard. I met uh, six RCMP SUVs, not all in a row, as well as four RCMP trucks on their way back to Prince George, or to Prince George for whatever. And uh, August the 23rd, local government uh, committee update with respect to the negotiations on the Columbia River uh, Treaty uh, Committee. Our Columbia River Treaty, and this is the federal government representation as well as the uh, provincial and uh, American. And our CRT chief negotiator is Sylvain Fabi. Okay, and he is from Ottawa. And uh, provincially, you've all met her, Kathy Eichenberger. Okay, so we did have an, an update and uh, they are very conscious this time and committed to receiving comments from all of the municipalities and the people within the basin. So that's very, very um, good of them to not just um, negotiate something without the people being aware. And on Saturday, this past Saturday, I... Um, at 7.45 a.m., I was at the Best Western <laughs> on a Saturday to uh, extend a welcome to uh, the Rocky Mountain Rangers. There were, uh, the leaders were here for meetings and uh, the commanding officer as well as the regiment sergeant major. I also met with them on Sunday at two o'clock when their meetings were over. And uh, they have uh, some interesting suggestions and requests for here, which I will discuss with council later on. And uh, last night, of course, was uh, with David Adamson and, uh, sorry, with Don, uh, Dan Adamson and David Fransman. Fransman, okay? And today, NDIT. And it was really very, interesting to meet with the NDIT CEO and all of his staff which are here just on a together trip and like a little bit of a retreat. Their first one they said. Yes their first one that's right so and because this building was their first uh, first project I guess to which they gave uh, was it three hundred and some thousand dollars for this building? Yes. Yes. And, and then some. And then yeah. some. Yes. So uh, it has always been a source of their pride too, that this building mm -hmm. is as beautiful as it is. And um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Now, thirteen point one. Oh, sorry. Motion, please, to receive the uh, comments. Blanchett and Salt. Any questions of anybody? All in favor? Carried. Agenda item 13.1, calendar of events for August... 12.1. And September 2018, pardon? Sorry, Your Worship, item 12.1. Oh, the project track filer. Okay. Um, motion to be uh, received, please. Okay, Salt and Blanchett. Is there anything that Council wishes to discuss? Okay, hearing nothing, all in favor? 13.1, calendar of events for August and September 2018. No motion required, but uh, is there anything that Council wishes to point out on any one of those dates? Okay, hearing Your none. Worship, uh, yes. Uh, if I could just ask staff mm -hmm. to add September 17th to the calendar of events for the Belmont Community yeah. Forest uh, yes. okay. annual gym. I don't probably be seven o'clock. So. It's typically around six ish, but six -ish. We, we'll verify. Okay, okay. Well, that can be um, confirmed after staff finds out. Okay. Okay, so um, 14.1 public comments on items considered by council as part of the approved agenda. Are there any public comments this evening? Yes? Um, I understand the tax rate will go down, but um, a house that is worth 250000 now, what would it be worth five years from now? And will we find ourselves in a situation like in the river where no one can afford to live there because the prices of the houses and the land has gone through the roof? And even though the tax rate may have come down, the cost of 
access to the residence would be quite extensive. Has anyone considered that? I guess I just want to say that even if the house, if the assessments go up, the village prepares a budget, and Mrs. McNee is here. Even if the assessments go up, the mill rate comes down. So that even though taxes or the assessments went up this last year, but my the, the assessment of my property is still below what it was in 2010. And houses in the real estate market are being sold below replacement value. So the cost of new construction is the cost of materials as well as labor. Yeah. Does council have any comment that they wish to make at this point? No? Okay. I don't make comments. Okay. <laughs> no, but with respect to uh, the uh, um, price of housing. Yes. PG Jamie, uh, mm -hmm. resident. Mm -hmm. I was very much um, thankful for the presentation last night. I think too, what we can also see is that infrastructure costs will be increasing. If we're going to get a greater influx of people, then we'll need to upgrade what we have, and in that, we'll need that tax base to be able to do that. And to me, it makes sense in increasing our. Uh, base such that we can keep up with the, mm -hmm. the uh, infrastructure that's needed. Okay, thank you. Okay. If there are no further comments, uh, motion please to receive the public comments. Blanchett and Salt. All in favor? Carried. 15.1, notice to proceed to in-camera meeting. Recommendation that council proceed to an in-camera council meeting for consideration of one item for section 91K of the community charter to discuss matters related to K, negotiations and related discussions respecting the proposed provision of a municipal service that are at their preliminary stages and that in the view of the council could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they were held in public. Motion please. Blanchett and Torgerson. All in favor? Carried. Okay. 15.2. 